Hello, this is Bob Keller illustrating how you can create your own lead sheets in Improvisation Advisor or Improviser. Here I'm going to create a lead sheet from scratch and I'm going to base it upon a, an existing uh, lead sheet from a fake book. In this case I'm going to use the Thelonious Monk fake book and I'm uh, using the B-flat version. So this would be appropriate for example for a trumpet player. So the first thing we'll do is we open a new lead sheet. I've already done that, so I'm just showing you where it would be in the file menu. And once you have that, you have basically 72 bars worth. You can add or, uh, or delete some of those bars if you wish. Uh, in our case, we have a 32-bar tune, so I'm just right off up front. I'm going to change that to 32. And that'll be our, um, our framework. And now, uh, since we're going to be developing a, uh, a, a play along for our trumpet, we're going to want to transpose the playback. So I use the transposition wizard here, select B flat trumpet, and say plant, transpose playback. So that's going to uh, have the playback sound be a whole step lower from the notation that is in the lead sheet itself. I don't have to transpose any notation because there isn't any notation yet, and that won't be a necessary step in this case. If you didn't, if you wanted to create a, a concert lead sheet, then you would just eliminate this step. You wouldn't have to worry about the transposition at all. Okay, so that having been done, we're going to go over and change our key signature to a single flat, so key of F by dragging down in the key signature area, signature area dragging slowly so we get one flat exposed. And then um, let's save this now uh, so that as we go along we can do saves and uh, in case we make a mistake and have to recover. So we'll save the lead sheet as, so we'll call it Let's Cool One Demo One. And that will be our the title of our lead sheet. And so the composer is Thelonious Monk. And now we're ready to begin the actual contents of the lead sheet. So this is a AABA -A tune. And that means that I can uh, make one version of the A part and do a lot of copying and pasting to have to avoid, uh, to avoid re-entering chords and notes. So let's begin the A section with the chords and we'll go up here to the textual entry and enter the chords for the A section. So it begins with F major 7 that occupies a full first bar and then we use a comma to separate that from the next bar uh, or we could use a vertical bar symbol. Either one of those will work. Uh, and then in the second bar we have um, a unique uh, uneven division of the chords. So there's a G minor 7 that gets three-fourths of the measure and then a C7 which gets one-fourth. So what we're going to do is we're going to use slashes to represent that unequal division of the chord much as you might find in a, in a guitar lead sheet for example. Uh, and so the idea here is that the G minor 7 is going to get three of the beats and the C7 will get one beat. Continuing on, the next uh, measure, we have four chords, F major 7, E7, E flat 7, and A7. Those are all equal, equally spaced. And then the next measure, D7, flat 9, sharp 11, is a single chord measure. Then G7, new measure, C7, F6, and then a turnaround, G minor 7, C7. So the turnaround will only uh, be in the first day. So once we have entered those, then we could we uh, see the chords on the lead sheet. All we did there was press return up here. And now uh, let's fill in the melody. So it begins with uh, note E, which repeats three times. 
last one it's a D instead of an E and then it goes up a whole step Now here we're going to get a B and we have to correct that so using the D key to bring that down a half, half step. Uh, normally you wouldn't see a B flat in an E7 chord. It is a color tone though and so we have to manually perform that correction. Here notice that the E flat is recognized. It's the flat 9. So it's already recognized. We don't have to do any correction. And then um, that note is held for three beats. So we want to then enter a rest. So we double click that slot, press R for rest, and then the pickup to the next phrase. Going on down to the next measure. This, so here I want this to be a C sharp. So I hit the space bar to correct the end harmonic from D flat to C sharp. And then the next uh, bar is a similar but not identical figure. So I want that to be a C sharp as well. Okay, I see that I wanted to this to start on the third beat, so I'm going to have to slide that over. Sorry. I'm going to have to drag this whole thing over, and this uh, is going to become a rest. And then this is a quarter note, so that becomes a rest. Uh, let's see. And we have... Okay, so that completes the first A section. And now to uh, copy this over, we'll double click the first slot and uh, up to the seventh bar. Selecting all those slots, we'll hit Control C to copy both the chords and the melody. And then double click on bar nine. And Control V will paste both the chords and the melody. Now in the second A, there is a little bit of difference uh, in, the, in the last part. So uh, there, what happens is this gets slid over. This will be rest. And then these parts here get deleted. So we'll press X to get rid of them. <clears throat> and that completes our second A. And then uh, second A and the last A are similar but not identical. So we'll copy these over and paste them and then touch them up later. So we go down to the last A section and paste the second A section. We'll come back and fix that in a moment. Now we're ready to concentrate on the B section, which starts at bar 17. So we'll double click that, go up to the textual entry, and type in the chords, which are simpler for the B section because each one of them is one or two bars long. B flat major 7. That occupies two bars, so we need the end of the first bar and then another comma to indicate that it ex extends over a second bar. And then we have G11, also extends two bars, and C7 sus. Okay, so I made a mistake there in that I typed G77 instead of G11 for some reason. And so uh, it doesn't recognize that as a chord, so we'll go back and edit at the textual level. We don't have to edit it in the lead sheet itself and just write over the chords that were, were originally there. Okay, so now we have our 
chords for the B section and let's put in the melody for the B section. So clicking on the first the first slot or the first bar of the bridge. And notice here that it automatically goes to uh, E flat because it recognizes uh, E flat as a chord tone. Here we want a rest. Here we want E flat. And then here we have a triplet, so we'll click in the first note, and then we have to press 3 because otherwise we get two subdivisions. So pressing 3 sets us up for our triplet. Going on to the second part of the bridge. Now here is a little trickiness in that uh, at least the lead sheet that I have shows uh, 16th note being used. So we have to divide this four ways instead of two. And that happens a couple of times. So every time we have these 16th notes, we want to divide four ways and click the last one of the four. One could actually gloss over that part maybe and make the maze notes, but we'll try to keep it as accurate as possible. Okay, and that completes the melody and now of the bridge at least. And now let's go back and touch up the final A section. So the first half is the same as always. And then the second half, we have this figure move back into its original place. So we'll drag it over. And then we have uh, in the second bar of that ending. And so we should have been saving along the way, but I haven't been doing that, but I'll save it now. And we're ready now to listen to the whole thing. See, I made a mistake there, so we'll correct that. This should be moved over. And also, we want to copy that here. Let's see, actually, I moved it. Didn't move it quite far enough, so we'll move it over one more beat. Try that again. We'll start from the uh, second A this time, so you don't have to hear everything again. Uh, so I select that uh, slot at bar 9, press Shift, Enter. It'll play to the end of the lead sheet.
okay, it sounds, sounds pretty much like I wanted it. Uh, what we'll do now is, uh, one thing we can do is uh, add the section markers, double bars, at the end of each section. So I'll open the Style and Section menu here, and I'm going to subdivide the original one section tune into four. So I would select four subdivisions, subdivide section, and each section, if we wanted to, could have a different style, but for now, we'll, we'll leave them alone. So we'll save that. We see that we have our double bars uh, ending each of the sections. And then that actually doesn't change the playback at all. Uh, but what we might do is change the style from this relatively squarish swing into something with uh, more interesting comping. So uh, I like the swing Sonny Clark style a lot. Uh, so I'll select that and let's listen to how that sounds. <laughs> Okay, so at this point you have our completed play along, which we could print out uh, for our own purposes if we wished. Uh, we can also uh, play along with the melody as written, or another thing we could do would be to erase all the melody, but don't save it because you don't want to destroy your hard work uh, that you, you use to enter all that stuff. Uh, and then you could uh, say select looping and have something that will just play along. Uh, you can you can improvise with it, for example, or if we play the original melody or whatever you you please. Um, you could also put in a count in if you wish, and then if you wanted to say sample what an improv improvisation might be, you could have improviser improvise over this tune for you by pressing the, the green button. Um, For a different style, you could uh, go to the Choose Grammar menu and say pick a different style and have an improvisation in that style instead of the uh, the basic chord plus approach grammar which we were using here. So it's So that concludes this demonstration. I hope you will try this and enjoy using Improvisation Advisor. Thank you.